everyone, I'm Izzy and if you're just watching this video from the title then hi, I post covers on YouTube, I edit all my thumbnails on Photoshop, linking to the skills I mentioned in this video. Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name's Izzy and I'll be showing you my grade A photography book at GCSE on the exam board AQA. Hope you enjoy. At the start of year 10, I didn't really have much experience in photography, so the start of my book isn't really that good. But my first theme is natural form, which we started with at the beginning of the term. So we started by taking a few photo shoots using school's cameras. I used my iPad as well, and we just did basic shoots focusing on line, pattern, texture, basically all of the natural forms as it says in the theme. These aren't my best shots because I haven't had much experience either. So here comes the dreaded darkroom pages. I hate a darkroom. This wasn't my strength, however I had to put it in to show our basic skills which we started at the beginning of the term as we were getting used to everything. We looked at pinhole cameras, art analysis, we also looked at cyanotypes and did that on Photoshop as well, basically showing all of our basic skills to show our examiner that we have a wide range. These aren't my best outcomes either. This probably isn't a grade A standard, however I'm just showing my skills such as photograms, we have to explain the process, then we have to do an assessment. Although my final outcome wasn't the best and I wasn't that happy with it, I think the reason why I got a grade A was because of the sheer amount of effort I put in and the improvement. So again, I'm just showing my basic skills such as collage, trace paper negatives. To show the gun that we have a wide range and we also did handmade collage as well. Another tip for photography is to have a wide range of experiments. So at least do a few examples, test strips and annotation to show the examiner that you know what you're doing. So another way to get a high mark is to show the way you're laying out your final outcomes and your research as well and then more experiments. So I did a few on Photoshop, we learned about film cameras, we labelled the film camera because we hadn't done it yet because we were beginners and then I did some more photo shoots on my camera and my school's camera and I did a massive evaluation of the final piece. So here is my new topic that I chose, which was not for picture, which was started in the second term of year 10, and here's my mood board for it. And then I had to analyse a lot of different artists that linked to that theme. Then I started to analyse a few more artists that used cropping to show effect, hence not the full picture. And I did a bit more art analysis and I looked at more news research. And then I did my own examples which I planned first of all using my maps and here was my photo shoot that I did which was creating a narrative and the four sets with annotations. Then I looked at some more news article research which helps build up your contextual understanding and also get some more marks um, and I just highlighted this as some more annotations and then I did my own edits using my friend Gemma, shout out to her, she's got a YouTube channel, I'll link it in the bio. Um, and I just did print screens and annotations and then I did a new photo shoot, more edits and more annotations using settings, then I did more techniques such as reflections and I also did a lot more experiments. So we did more photo shoots at school using not the full picture as a theme and print screens to show the examiner how we edit the pictures. Then I visited an exhibition which is important to boost up um, your marks and I went to Brighton to do this on a school trip and it, I had such a good time and I got some really good outcomes. Um, it really brightened up my page, <laughs> no joke, um, but seriously you know, I did more um, edits on Photoshop with print screens which showed that I had a wide range of skills and I annotated how I did this obviously as always, I did some more acetate negative. Move on to the next theme which is journeys, um, kind of like connections which leads on to the sub theme and I did a mind map for this to show all my ideas and then I visited another exhibition in the summer holidays which was the Tate and I looked at some new artists and then I created a photo shoot to respond to this um, I went to Iceland and London as well and I had some really good final outcomes um, this was all taken on my iPad actually guys so you know it just shows that you don't have to have a fancy camera for photography then I mind mapped my ideas which I ended up choosing the sub theme of connections and I did a little mood board for that with a bit of an explanation why I chose the theme. I forgot to say, these, these photo shoots are taken in year 11, which was the first time of year 11 that we started this theme and I did more photo shoots on my iPad and did more artist analysis. 
and more edits with print screens. Then I did more experimental pages where I purposely made out of those those pictures and did edits and mixed media such as spilling coffee or water over the image. I then looked at Amy Friend who was an artist who looked at family connections through lights and family portraits which I then responded to by taking pictures of a picture of my grandparents and a watch to show the connection of time and different generations etc which I annotated and showed my best outcomes and then I went to London and basically got lights and then put them through to show connections between different people and then I looked back to uh, family generations and the connection to family. I also looked at a Japanese artist who took pictures of fast shaft speed bikes moving to show connections of transport, which I then took in London and linked back to my chemigrams, which I edited to show fast pace of connections. Okay, for my mini masterpiece, I took pictures of my mum with fairy lights to show the connection between family and and my heritage as well. I then created more mixed media experiments using acetate and collage with roads and my portraits with lights um, which showed the connections between generations basically and it was the road of where I was born and I edited that with my mum and then my portrait as well. I found my mini masterpiece um, for my mock exam and I annotated that and I did more Bokka photo shoots with self-time portraits of me which linked to my heritage. I think what got me so much high marks is the technical ability that I was able to explain in my book. So I explained how I created the book of sheets and my final outcomes and more experiments with annotations of print screens and Photoshop which showed I had a wide variety of skills. I did this multiple ways by having the face with the road. I also did more mini masterpiece planning my mock exam so I showed them and how I wanted it to look. I did more experiments which weren't as successful in my opinion um, but I did more Bokka and roads edits on Photoshop, um, that was my favourite actually with the one coming through, I thought the contrast with the colour might be really good, um, and I added some more annotations, um, and basically just loads and loads and loads of testers so that I had loads of examples to show with annotations, and here was my final outcome using three edits that I did. The theme for the exam was elements of the landscape within portraiture, I created a mood board for this basically showing all my ideas, and then I created a landscape photo sheet, which was in my school basically just those different trees and branches and anything I could find really. I annotated all of my reasons and intentions and then I made more edits um, on Photoshop and print screens to show the process behind my experiments and why I did them and also the camera settings which was really important. Then I created an artist analysis comparing the trials between two artists that I responded to later in my book. And I created a really funny photo shoot, in my opinion, with my dad did a double exposure and objects and how linking to how it contributes to emotions in portraits. Um, and I created some really good outcomes, I, in my opinion, um, using double exposure. Um, and I also put the camera settings again. Um, and I also created edits from Photoshop using transparency and opacity, which all look very different in their own way. Then I looked at phenotypes and chemigrams, very bad attempts. It is important to show your mistakes so to show improvement to be fair, but anyway. So then I went to London on a school trip, again in year 11 this time, and we went to the Tate and I took city and landscape images to link to my theme elements of the landscape within portraiture. I annotated this, made the page look all vibrant and basically look brighter and interesting than my school pictures essentially. I was actually really happy with the outcomes that I got. I got some mixture of black and white and colour edits, reflections, and we also got some examples of some of the artist's work. So here is an acetate slash Photoshop edit that I did with my dad. Um, I was really happy with how the flowers in the trees aligned with the portrait. I thought it was really effective. And also some acetate negatives, which I of course annotated. Um, very small, hard to read writing. Um, then I moved on to do a photo shoot with my best friend and Isabel, who are twins. And I just did a photo shoot with like text and the landscape as well to obviously show my theme. I also did more Photoshop edits using chemigrams and layering to link to portraiture, landscape and the fact that they're twins as well and always part of each other. Then I looked at another artist who uses multiple exposure 
on Photoshop and I link that to cities and how it can affect our emotions. Um, I liked an article and I responded to that by going up to Sutton and taking several exposure pictures of city landscapes um, using double exposure. And I created a mini masterpiece plan for my next shoot. Shoot involved abstract images of mini landscapes in objects and double exposure portraits which especially this one was really effective I thought. I then did some more black and white edits, layering and multiple exposure on Photoshop using print screens to show my process. These aren't my favourite but they do show development from my previous experiments. Then I did another portrait photo shoot of my best friend Gemma using multiple exposure um, which I then used in later edits and shout out to my friend Gemma because you helped me a lot on my photography GCSE. Then I designed some prototypes to these edits which I planned out before I did them because using Photoshop and I basically layered the scenery on top of the face with the outline like a silhouette which I thought was quite effective but it wasn't my best and it doesn't prove it. I did a quick evaluation to show what went well and what could have been improved, show that I'm carefully thinking about and evaluating my work. I then had a bit of a brain dump for more ideas to extend my edits further. The graphic design, this graphic design artist and inspiration really was a turning point of my project and it made me develop more geometric angular shapes in my edits um, which I wouldn't have done otherwise and I think this is much more effective and really boosted my mark for my final piece. To create these shapes I just used the shape tool in Photoshop using triangles and this is my last photo shoot that I did of my friend Brew, which I then used in my final piece, for my plan. And here was a prototype that I made based on different examples, those different testers, using white card, black card. And then here was another bounce piece that I did, which took me so long I had to cut up those different pieces. I didn't end up using it in the end, but it was a good tester. So those different collage bits, basically. Um, and then the final piece I don't actually have a picture of because it wasn't an exhibition in my school at the time. However, this was my a little sneak peek of the edits that I did for that. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you did. And comment any questions you still have about my photography GCSE. And I'll be happy to answer them. And yeah. And also, I know we're also not done right now. So... Please take this video with a pinch of salt. I know not everyone has access to everything, but maybe in future videos I can let you know what editing software I'm using in remote learning. Hope you guys enjoy. Bye!